Almost every day he would be coming in, be good soldiers, be good boys, be good men, and go to working party. It'd be far better for you. Wouldn't you rather be out in the fresh air with fresh air instead of being cooped up and perhaps in a solitary jail, solitary cell? No, we don't do that shit. We are not working. Well, of course, now our group are really grown. We have become a real thorn in their side. So, the order must have come from up top. Get rid of them. So what the hell were they going to do with us? We knew they couldn't shoot us all, because that would cause, because we were being visited regularly by the International Red Cross from Sweden. So we knew they couldn't shoot us all. Maybe some of us are going to get shot. Too bad. We <laughs> could take a bloody chance. No, we're not going to work. So they come out, Muller come on right. You're leaving. Thank Christ for that. Where are we going? Of course, no answer from him. He not tell us. So you're going, I think it was about June, beginning of June, 43, something like that. I don't really know. I've forgotten. Anyway, we packed everything up, taken down the railway station, put in the cattle trucks, and it took off. And it went, and it went, and it went. Only two small grills in there to breathe through, so we were pissing and all over the place in the truck. No food from them except what we carried. And then bang, the train stopped. The doors were slammed, open. Get out, shell, house, house, out. Where the hell are we? There was desolation all around us. It read, Hohenfels, which means high field in transla literal translation. Hohenfels? Where the hell is that? Nobody knew. Get out, rouse, rouse, out, out, schnell, schnell, move, move. And then three ton trucks come tumbling down. And they were racing like hell coming down this hill. And ripped that out, jumped men in Air Force uniform. Who the hell are you? Because suspicion. Where are we? What are we doing here? And these three trucks turned up with the Air Force. It took a lot of persuasion on their part to us that they were genuine British prisoners of war and they were the front of the camp people and they come down to collect us and our belongings and our parcels. You come down to collect our and our parcels. Yeah, the last two trucks in there contain Red Cross parcels belonging to you. Oh. Okay, march. So, we marched, and we marched, and we marched. Through bloody scrubland and toland. Eventually we come to this camp, and it was set on the side of a hill. And every house was on stilts, about three feet tall. Well, we now knew why this was done. It was to prevent tunnels being dug so that the Germans could see underneath. You weren't digging a bloody tunnel under the building that you were living in. But there were buildings built into the ground. Toilets and showers. <laughs> Big mistake. Big mistake. And that was our camp. Then we learned that it was known as Offlag 3. It had been built originally for Serbian officers. But they put us instead because we were a real pain in the ass to the Germans. Get rid of us. Put it in the miner. Get us away from everybody else. And that's where we were, set out in this wood up in the plain, going for us. Well, there were probably four, about 400 of us, eh? And we walked and we walked and we walked. We got up into this, into the camp, through the gates. And just say clap. It's okay. <laughs> no, I heard you say what you last said. We could hear her snoring. Oh. I heard him say what he last said. Yeah. Okay, but you were snoring and then you tend to go to sleep. It's okay, darling. 
something? Okay. Okay. No, I know. All right, it's okay. We'll start again. It is warm in here. Yeah. So we got to this camp. Well, did they turn the furnace up at all today? No. It's the lights, Doreen. They're really bright and they make a lot of heat. Maybe. I want to do this. Okay. This we'll, like, we'll wait for you to get comfortable and then we'll keep I filming. Got shoes off, so. <laughs> okay. All right. So you went to the camp. We walked on through. stilts. Yeah. Well, we walked through the. Every camp had double gates. The first gate, uh, well, both gates were about 15 feet tall. Um, all barbed wire, and Perhaps then between the first gate and the second. Wait a second. Let's see if we can look at the glasses. He's looking down because it's where he's thinking. Okay. Good. Then that's okay. You don't mind if he's making I, contact. I'm loving the story. I'm, I'm okay. raptured and okay. I'm enjoying it. Sounds good. Okay, ready? And on stilts. <laughs> Having gone through the first gate, between that and the second was about probably three, maybe four yards, all covered with barbed wire, and then you come to the second set of barbed wire. And the second gate was open, then we walked in. And then we were sent to um, as companies, because there were, say, several hundred dollars, split into companies, and uh, we went to different huts. And my hut was hut 84. And directly, well, almost directly behind it was uh, a German Wachturm, which is a watchtower manned by two German soldiers with machine guns, which is a normal procedure. But the biggest shock I got was I found my friend Bert Holder who I'd left in the gutter in Boulogne as dead with the back of his head blown off. And there he was. I tried to go and live with him in his hut, but he was already organized. And so I, I couldn't, I had to wait for a while. And eventually I did. And we stayed together all the rest of our time. Now, Star Life 383 really became a college of education. We had non-commissioned officers there who had been first-class teachers in every subject you can mention. We had professional actors, professional teachers, elocutionists, electricians, carpenters, forgers, criminals. You mentioned it, we had them. We had everything except women. It was an amazing collection of men and it grew and it grew and it grew until the camp, jumping a number of years, finished up with between six and eight thousand non-commissioned officers. All nationalities, Irish, Scots, Welsh, Picts, Cypriots, Germans, Jews, Italians, of, of origin, but fighting in the British forces, of course. And there I was able to complete my education. 